This is the most dangerous psychopath I ever had the pleasure of locking up. He was the trend killer. He killed all the trendy, whatever trend came along, he started killing people from that community. He can help us with this case, but I'm warning you, don't be fooled. He's a psycho. You have any weapons, leave him. Your gun, don't bring your gun in there. He finds a way to get it. Put it down, even that pen. Put the pen down. Yes. He can't, yeah, put it down. Right. Trust me, he'll get his hands on it. The pen too, all of it. You don't want to bring any sharp objects, anything in there. All right. Sit. Yes. They have me locked down. 24 hours a day, six days a week, chained in my cell. What are you doing that seventh day? Oddly work release. The truth is, I haven't had human contact in eight years, unless this interaction counts as human contact, which is debatable. Detective, you called me here. What do you want? If I recall, our last conversation was you shooting me. Yes, but I have a case. And you, and you need my help, yes. the hipster murders, but I don't know anything about that. You see, there were no hipsters when I was first put away. That's right, I locked you up for killing an emo in the late 90s. That's right, so you did. Before that, preppies. Couldn't stand their look with the sweater over the shoulder. Before that, it was yuppies with their dockers. Yet you never killed me. I wanted to, in the early 90s. Couldn't figure me out? Could anyone figure you out with that mullet and that pirate's jacket you wore in that 90s HBO special with the skinny jeans? It wasn't a trend at all, it was horrible. What were you trying to do exactly? Are you gonna help us or not? Fine, what do I get out of it? Will you help us out and it's quid pro quo. Well, I don't know if I can help you. I can only tell you how I used to do it. I would spot a trendy idiot, and then I would follow him for a few bucks. I'd slow down my car and pretend to ask for direction, and then I would shoot him. But you seem so attractive and normal. Stop panting, sweet cheeks. We get it. I'm good looking. We need you to tell us exactly who the guy's going to be. I'd say he's a white male, probably older. Probably has a car, some money, and he's got a grudge. I don't know why, but I do know one thing. What's that? He likes it, and now that he has a taste for it, he's never going to stop. Is that okay? Is that great? It wasn't too like effeminate or anything. No, Something. no, it's grand. You Thank know what you. I mean? Thank you. I would just, uh, where'd you get that uh, that thing about the HBO special? That was kind of. Oh yeah, there was something I just wanted to throw in. Was that okay? Yeah, no, I just don't think people, people don't, they remember the content. They don't remember the look at that time. I don't, good. I think that's what, why the look endures is that it's not of a trend. That people, when they talk about it, always say that it was as if you didn't sort of know what people were dressing like at the time. Well, you're saying that. Do people not talk, do no, people not ask talk. you about it? It's hard to explain. Although, you know, for all we know, that was a French trend. That would maybe make some sense. Have you seen it? That mullet, it just remind me of every white dude in South Philly, every Irish guy that we ever had problems with. Hey. It's the Flyers. Hey. Hi, Kyle. Hi, nice to Colin's uh, uh, manager. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, we met earlier by mm -hmm. the snack table there, oh, and yeah. uh, I was at an SNL after party. Uh, John Goodman, a couple years ago. Okay. Great job out there. Oh, thanks. Or in there, yeah. yeah it's it was fantastic. Really this is a good fit for you. Oh, well. This real acting stuff? <laughs> taking it seriously. It's a very, it's a departure. Oh. I don't know if your managers or agents, if they're not pushing this kind of stuff for you. I can oh, no, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with what I'm doing. Yeah, you got, well, you got a great gig, I know. Yeah. But you use it as a base from which to go explore other ventures uh -huh. kind of a way. Well, it's just, it's a full-time job. There's really, oh, of I mean, course. Yeah. I, I don't want to explain the logistics to you, but there's just not time to. I don't know if you know this, but Ben Affleck's doing Batman. Yeah, yeah Which I, know I just feel like, I'd rather see you in a role like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think anybody would want to see that. Count me as one and then we'll, we'll go from there. 
Uh, again, I don't know, like, so who exactly are you with in terms of, you know, agency, manager type people? I don't feel comfortable telling you their name. I'll, I'll look it up. Have you been on Seth's show before? I've been on many times, yeah, like three or four times. I love the Seth Meyers for that hour of TV. That's the Seth Meyers we all love. The Seth Meyers, the other 23 hours, we don't know where that Seth Meyers goes into what darkness he goes. I suspect it's, it's pretty bleak. Look, it's just, I don't have to be here. You know, I don't owe Colin anything, but it's just this weird thing. Like, if you're in comedy, you're supposed to, like, like and respect Colin, but, you know, we don't really have any connection. You know, sure, we were both on SNL, but not at the same time. You know, where were his fellow castmates? You know, why is Tina Fey not here? Why is Will Ferrell not here? I think what that proves is, you know, the more you know Colin, the less likely you are to to want to do him a favor. So you're saying you don't like Colin? No. No, look, Colin's great, everybody's great, this was great, I'm so happy I did it. Uh, I'm Seth Meyers, I'm the good guy, just like old CQ, uh, I can't, you know, I can't wait, um, I can't wait to see this.